Okay, I know you can all see me very well. My hair is very distinctive. Let's hope you can hear me too. Okay, so um, I am what we call the gate crashed attendee to this particular conference. Good morning, Mr. Charla. Uh, gate crashed because you can keep looking at that paper up and down, but you won't find my name on it. And because it's an education conclave, we decided to give everybody a challenge that after that, after I'm done, you'll use chat GPT to check up on who I am, right? And if chat GPT is going to tell you more than what I'm going to tell you in the next 15 minutes, I personally will sponsor you as an attendee to the next Think Edu conclave, okay? So on that note, especially to those in the back, can you hear me properly? See, it's in many, I'm a musician, right? So in many music concerts, they put people like me first to check if the sound is working okay. So that after this, Justice Call and other people can have better audio quality. So if you can hear me, it means I have done my job for the rest of the day. Okay. On that note, I always start with this, and this is something that we ask. I work with a very small number of 7,73,000 children today. Okay. You should clap. How can one person work with 7,73,000? That is where technology comes in, right? So I'm going to ask everybody here, because it's the very first session of the day, to start by doing something I get most of my kindergarten kids to do, OK? Can you all rub your hands like this? It's a very cold room. Especially Pinadi Okandra Karanga, Ungulakaha special la. OK? OK. Hands apart, OK? I'm going to count to three. When I say three, you clap. One, two. No, no, it's all Okay. Usually, kindergarten children will say, uncle, you did not say three. Right? Okay. One, two, three. Remember this exercise, but this is also underlying something that we are all facing as a problem in education and pretty much in many other issues in the day to day. We are not, we, we are not patient enough to wait for the process. Right? We want the solution, and we want the solution now. So before I finish saying two people are clapping, right? Because you want to get on with the day. What do we want to get on to? Nobody knows. But let me start by referencing one of our distinguished speakers who came yesterday, somebody who means a lot to me personally and a lot to the nation personally, Sri Gopal, Krish Gopal Krishna Gandhi, who ended his speech yesterday by referencing this particular tune, which is very, very important for India today. And that is this. All I will say with this particular one is while the first line is extremely important to all of us, the second line is even more important to most of us. On this, let me start. Uh, I just want to have one slide here, which I wanted to use if the slides are working. One of the big problems, like I said, that we start with is, you remember this beautiful time called the pandemic? when we all attended or pretended to attend Zoom class, when we actually came, put on the on button on our Zoom classes, pretty much in bed, switched off audio and video and sent a message to the teacher saying, unfortunately, Wi-Fi problems, but I'm still in class. That beautiful time. Following that, since I work with this many number of children, we did a small poll with government school children in southern Tamil Nadu asking them, why do you want to come back to school? Because when the pandemic closed and children came running back to school, because during the pandemic, please remember, and this was part of Kaveri Bamsai's panel yesterday also, when we were talking about edu education technology, let's not use the word education technology and so on. 
people are predicting that schools are going to close and everything is going to go online and that's the end of education as we know it. Schools should lease their real estate and make them into resorts. Right? And what happened? The day the pandemic ended, we all went running back to school. And so we asked children, and this is in Madurai, Tirnalveli, Tutukudi, and Kanyakuri. These are the districts in which we asked, and these words were given. And we asked children, why do you want to go back to school? What is in it in school for you? Because everything is online. And I have translated, or rather my team has translated, what they said in Tamil. And these were the words that they said. We go to learn, thank God. We go to interact with each other. Socialize, create, co-create, invent, ideate, interpret, make friends, collaborate, all of these, play, run, build. But I want to focus on only two words or three. In line four, it says laugh, level, equalize. And when we investigated further, the answers were extremely moving. Many children reported that they were not allowed to laugh at home. That if they laughed during class, parents end up thinking that they are not taking education seriously. That if they laugh too loud, parents and their frustration are being shown at children. Level. I am not considered equal at home, whereas in school I am wearing uniform, I am considered equal. Equalize. These are all very important things. Right? In a country where we have designed to keep people out, because 1 million people applying for 1000 seats, 10 million students applying for 10,000 seats, not a culture of exclusion. School is the culture of inclusion. And I, we thought this was extremely important. In fact, the last three words were, a school helps me solve for my life. A school is bestowing me with love. Did you ever think that a word love would come in a school? And then we discovered, when especially talking to girl children in Madurai, that they said they felt love from their friends and from their teachers that they did not feel at home. This is one of the reasons that they went running back to school. And I thought it's very important that you start your second day bringing the focus back to why are this for, right? If all of this and all that we are doing is not going to contribute to a child feeling love for himself or herself in the classroom and feel equal to everybody else, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that we are wasting our time, right? I'm putting these numbers because these numbers are important. Also, since I'm a professor as well, Unless I put numbers, you won't believe that I have a PhD. Okay? 69 is the total number of new job descriptions that fresh undergraduates are expected to be applying to in the year 2030 as defined by the World Economic Forum report. What does this mean? 69 jobs that have not even been invented yet are going to be present just five years from now and we have no idea what they are, and yet we are preparing students in education. What does that mean? 96, the next word, next, next number, 96 million is the total number of teachers needed by the year 2030. So for all the teachers in the room, chat GPT is not going to take your job, don't worry. You have to upgrade yourself, but we're going to need more teachers. So there is nobody is saying that physical teachers are going to disappear and chat GPT will replace all of us, nothing. We need more teachers and we need more new teachers. The last two numbers also made me feel very happy. 69 is the total number of education technology companies that closed down in India in the year 2023-24. 96 is the total number of new education technology companies that were also created in the year 23-24. What does it mean? We are still trying to solve these problems. We still don't know what the answers to these problems are. If you thought these numbers meant something else, too bad. So here is an exercise that we gave these same children in southern Tamil Nadu. But before we do that, let, because there's a keyboard, let me do this. I've got a whole bunch of young people sitting there pretending that they don't know what the song is. Because I can tell you that many of them were completing the next line in their heads, right? Which film is this from? 
excellent. I am sure if I asked you a question in thermodynamics, second semester, nobody would know the answer. Okay? Which is also underlying part of the problem in education today. We are not learning things experientially. We are learning things factually, which is why we don't remember things. You experience this film in audio-visual, you experience this with the beautiful voices of the people you admire, you experience this with the visuals of people that you like to see, and you end up remembering the experience. It's a very important part of education. One of the things that we found, again in the survey we did, by the way, the survey was 31,444 students that we did the survey with, is that experience is the only thing that remains, not factually. One textbook does not work for everybody, right? So we asked children, these are again rural children, rural skill children, rural school children from southern Tamil Nadu, Tirnalveli, Tutukudi, no technology exposure, nothing. We said, how would you like your classroom to be and this is the kind of illustrations and models that they developed. Right? We, a lot of us, especially above the age of 40, with my end of hairstyle, are pontificating on what education should be. I think it's important that we listen to what the 12-year-old is saying. They want their classrooms to be circular because a circular classroom promotes equality. Rows and columns means that the front row ends up getting more attention than the back row. What a simple insight. My classroom should have everything that I have created along with my classmates around me. Why? Because if I exhibit and display the things that I like and the things that I've created, it makes me feel that the space is for me. I don't want to just have standardized textbook material printed and put on the wall so that I mug it up. Give me an experience. I'm happy that children are beginning to think about eco-friendly and sustainability. Again, please remember these are rural school children. Okay. This was created by a group of girl children in a Dindakal school. Okay. They have gone to the computer science teacher and asked her to help them render it. They said, we want, look at it again, the classroom should be collaborative. We do not want the classroom to be rows and columns. You're asking us to be collaborative, you're asking us to work in groups, then why is the seating arrangement, starting with the seating arrangement, why is it in rows and columns? Right? Put a sick bed in the room so that if we are sick, we don't have to go home, we don't have to be sent away. Two girls have written, when we are going through our periods, don't send us out of the classroom. We can stay in the classroom and we can still attend class. Give us a map of the world, don't give us a map only of Tamil Nadu, don't give us a map of only what is defined to us politically. These are children. I did not make this up. Anybody is welcome to come and read the report. Okay? And so we started this project where we said, if experience is what is important, experiential learning is what is important. Here is a situation that happened to me, and this became the reason why we started doing this. So in 2021, in the second wave, I almost died. R literally. Not because of COVID. I had some other health challenges. And because there were no hospital beds available, they put me in a maternity ward. There were three pregnant ladies and me. I really thought this was the end of life. And at that time, I was treated by two doctors, one of whom was a childhood friend, like me, had gone through a middle-class life and a middle-class school education. He used to come and hold my hand every day and say, everything will be nice, you're a good person, good things will happen to good people. The second person, was a specialist, and I put it in quotes. Highly educated, would have been somebody who would have made all our panels proud, because he is a PhD from Harvard, he's got an FRCS from Edinburgh, he's got every single degree that you can have. And such a specialist was he, that I could smell his cologne coming into the room before he came into the room, which is how I knew I did not have COVID. But his job as a specialist would be to come and look at the blood test reports, not me, would be to look at the numbers and not my feelings, and keep telling my wife, this is it. Relatives class only tell all the relatives, this guy's not gonna make it, right? The second time he came in and again pronounced death judgment on me, and I've got a legal luminary sitting in front of me, so somebody actually passed a death sentence on me, being a specialist. I held his hand and I said, I want you to do me a favor. He said, what? I said, please never come back and see me again. And being Indian and educated and highly privileged, and sometimes, unfortunately in India, hyper-educational degrees sometimes confers privilege, which even caste and class do not, right? And this man is looking at me and, hold, and saying, 
How dare you say this to me? Do you know medicine or do I? My only answer was, let's hope we don't answer this question. But it gave me an idea that let's not confer privilege just because somebody's got fancy degrees from fancy places. Experience is what matters. If all it takes to solve for India's multiplicity, multiplex problems of education, let me start with one, which is access. If the same talented children in Dindakal and Tirnalveli can be given access to the same Harvard, the same Stanford, the same IIT Madras, the same excellent institutions and professors all over the world, we can transform this country. Yeah. We can transform it with opportunity and that is what I have done. What we did for three months in an ICU, I built a platform where now, by the way, one more statistic because I love numbers, 31,344 is the total number of professors in the United States alone who are Indian. 31,344. It is not a matter of pride. We want them back. Right? Let's not clap for them going away. We fed them. We clothed them. We educated them and they have now gone away. We need to bring them back. Okay? So one of the things we said is if we can create simple access through experiential project-based learning. How can we do project-based learning? That same professor who grew up in Tirnal Valley, let him help the Tirnal Valley kids, but sitting in Toronto, no problem. That's what technology enables, right? So as of today, and this was a project we started in January 23, as of today, 2,88,700 students all over India have already become part of this program, where we have even children from Salem, from Shoringanallur, from Salayur, from Tamaraparani, directly accessing Harvard and IIT. Four children from Chennai, and this was not one of the greatest schools, but four children from Chennai, 11th graders, using this platform, worked with IIT Madras, have cracked a platform to help children with autism express emotion, right? I want to give you two statistics, and I will stop with that with a song, because I know you're late for your next panel, which is this. These four children are 15 years old. You know what their class teacher told me? I'm so surprised that they have developed this platform because in computer science, they're getting less than 60%. This is the truth, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Education is not only for the privileged. Education is not only because you got 99% in school. One neat exam, one JE does not determine your self-worth. What determines your self-worth is your capacity to contribute. And if we can use our own brain talent from all across the world to help our own children through project-based learning or through experiential, and we are just one solution. I'm sure there are going to be hundreds of solutions out there which are going to contribute to this. I think we need to focus on learning and not on education. I think we need to focus on wisdom and not on degrees. I know this is not what a lot of education companies want to hear, but let me stop with that by playing one song and then one exercise and then I'm done for the day. So on this project-based learning that we've done, as I said, it's more than three lakh, almost three lakh children. The same girls from Dindakal, four girls, have now designed an app for menstrual health. And not only did they design it, by the way, again, Ombodang last pasanga, 14 year old, okay? Not computer science students. Not only have they designed it, but the professor from Harvard, who's also from Madurai, who guided them, mentored them through this process, 
has decided to invest in the app himself. And so it's becoming a reality, right? This is change and it can happen, right? So because the energy of clapping is so low, maybe we should have brought Nayantara or something, then everybody would have clapped a lot more. Okay. So can you all just rub your hands together like this one, one more time for me? You know why I make you do this? Because then you'll keep your phones down. Okay? Hands apart. Mr. Chavla, you have to play the game too. Okay? One, two. Okay. One, two, three. Remember this. A group that can clap together, can stay together and a group that can stay together will change the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>